Hello, this is Danny with Pwn CNC, and I want to talk about installing the bracketing system for the CNC Newbies carriage, XZ carriage um, onto the uh, Shipoko 3. Let's get started. So what I have here is two track brackets, two uh, a left and a right or a left and a right support arm. We've got a couple of T-nut, 3D printed T-nut plastic parts couple of thumb screws, a stabilizer bracket with a couple of sc attachment screws. We have I two identical, they're, they're, they're identical, uh, two ears for attaching to the carriage, as well as two long M5 screws. You may have extra screws in your bag. Um, this is all you're going to need for this installation. Let's uh, zoom in on the carriage itself. Okay, so here we are on the left side of the carriage. I'm gonna take my ear, we're gonna take one of the track brackets, an M, uh, three millimeter hex driver, and two of the long uh, M5 screws. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ear, we're going to line it up uh, visually with the holes there on the left side. We're gonna take our track bracket. The holes for the track bracket, they run along the side, they need to be on the inside of the carriage. The reason is we're gonna utilize this bottom hole here to provide a really nice stable, uh, uh, place for our stabilizer bracket to attach to. So we're gonna use the two, the first and third row, we're gonna use the inner hole um, as you hold the track bracket in there. We're gonna hold that right there. And I'll get these started. You are screwing into plastic. Get that out of the way. Screwing into plastic, um, just barely, but mostly you're gonna be screwing into the threads that are already in place on those two holes. So just give that a, ni a, a nice loose connection there. We're not gonna tighten it down until we get both holes, um, both screws in place and threading correctly. It should not give you any resistance. If it does, uh, just wiggle it around a little bit. Try to get that, that screw to line up with that hole. That's kind of the hardest part here. Once you've got it lined up, you should be good to just tighten both of them down. So while I have you in a zoomed in version, let me reach over. I'm gonna take the stabilizer bracket and one of these uh, socket head um, M5 screws, and I believe I need to switch to a four millimeter hex driver. So I'm gonna take this from the bottom, and here, let me zoom in a little better. It's gonna be a lot easier if we zoom in. Okay, so we're zoomed in. We have our stabilizer bracket, we have our M, uh, M4 or four millimeter hex driver, and our socket, M5 socket uh, screw. We're gonna come in from the bottom right here. The screws are on, the, are on towards the front side. So we're gonna slide that just behind the track and right up into place. Of course, I don't have my carriage attached fully, but it should snap right into place and the holes in the bottom should line right up with the track. Again, you're screwing into plastic and threading it at the same time, so it may give you some resistance, but just kind of tighten it down and you're ready to go. Let's switch over to the other bracket and get that set up. Okay, so here we are on the back side. I'm gonna reach around my installed HDZ here and point out um, the uh, limit switch here. So we're gonna to need to remove that using the four millimeter hex driver. We're gonna be taking over those screw holes there for our ear. And then we're going to attach the limit switch directly to the ear. So we're gonna set this assembly aside and we're gonna grab our ear piece. And again, just like on the left side, we're gonna visually line it up. Oop. <laughs> with the holes underneath, so, or hold with the holes. So visually lined up, we're gonna take our track brackets, or one of our track bracket with the holes towards the center line of the carriage and two of the long M5 screws Again, we're going to go into the, the first row and the third row on the inner side. 
and line those up with the holes on the front. Using a three millimeter driver, we're going to add the track. Let's see. and get both screws started. And as you go in, it shouldn't give you much resistance whenever you finally make contact with the threaded holes here. If it does, back off. You don't want to damage the aluminum uh, threads, so just back off a little bit. And once you've got them all in place and good to go, of course I've I've already damaged my threads, so from before. <laughs> so it gave me a little resistance, but we're gonna tighten that down. So we're good to go. So we've got our track bracket installed and let's get our limit switch back on there. So our limit switch, of course, I've, I've got it pulled over from my HDZ so I can demonstrate this, but we take our hex driver. The first two set of holes is what we used for our tracks. We're gonna switch it out because we're actually expanding the width of the carriage by just a tiny bit. Uh, we're gonna use these other set of holes for our limit switch. So they're aligned just perfectly. And again, you're threading plastic. So just give a nice consistent push. And then there it goes. You may need to switch to an actual driver to make that work. But if you do, go nice and slow. Don't put too much, uh, don't put too much speed on it because it will strip the plastic. It is just plastic after all. And you don't want to strip the plastic. There we go. Get that in there. Nice and tight. There. Now, our uh, limit switch is installed. Let's switch back to the front and we'll work on uh, the other stabilizer bracket screw and get our support arms attached. So first things first, we're gonna take a M5 hex driver, or a M, uh, four millimeter hex driver, our M5 socket screw, and we're gonna Line that up with our stabilizer bracket and screw that in. This kind of grabs a hold of the bottom side of the track and gives a really nice, secure, tight hold onto it um, and giving that third point of contact. So you got one, two, and three is the bottom track here, or the stabilizer bracket here. So. The next thing we need is we're going to take our right support arm, our 3D printed nut plate, and a thumb screw. Slide the thumb screw in, and from the back side, and this is where I may need to loosen. Yep, looks like I should have slid in my nut plate first, since there is a really tight connection there, I tried to make sure that was nice and tight so that that piece did, doesn't fall out. So we've got it in there. We're gonna use my finger here to slide it up a little bit and line it up with the hole and there. So we've got our left side attached. Let's switch over to the other side and I'll zoom in so you can get a better, better look of what I just did. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up our socket screw here, just a little bit, a couple of turns. We're gonna take our right, uh, left support arm, the left thumb screw, and, well, I guess a uh, thumb screw, they're not, they're not matched actually, just the arms are, as well as the nut plate. We're gonna slide the nut plate into position. We need to loosen up this a little bit further. There we go. Once it slides into place, you can tighten that socket screw back down. And the idea is, is that that piece is not going anywhere, uh, no matter what kind of vibration or whatnot. But take your thumb screw, slide it into the support arm, slide the support arm 
position it just right in there. With it loose but not completely, you can move up and down the support arm and make that work. So the last thing we're going to do is, of course, install our dust boot. Slide it in from the back, slide it right into position, take our, uh, it should work great like that. If you want that little bit of extra security, you could take these uh, locking pins, just drop them right into place on either side. In most cases, uh, that'll be sufficient. It does hold the boot in place. It will not slide out of those tracks. But if you really want that extra bit of security, you could take these locking pin nuts. Just gonna bring it in from the bottom. Try to design these so that they're nice and easy to install. Of course, I'm kind of pinched right there on the ground. I may need to leave the, raise my boot up. Nope, there it goes. So just tighten that up. That pin is not going anywhere. That boot is not going anywhere, no matter how much I force it. And you're good to go. So this is Daniel with Pwn CNC. I'm happy that you uh, were able to join me installing the bracketing system for the CNC for newbies uh, XY carriage, an upgrade available for the um, Shapoko 3 um, from Carbide 3. Thanks for joining me and happy making.